Okay, so this is problem six from chapter six. And they gave us some information. We we're given the information that the, uh, an inductor has inductance of 20 millihenries. Current at time zero is 40 milliamps. And the general equation for the current is A1e to the negative 10,000 T minus or plus A2 e to the negative 40,000 T. Voltage at time zero is 28 volts. And we want to find the general equation for the voltage, um, the general equation for the voltage through the, of the inductor. And we also want to find the time when uh, power through the inductor is zero. Okay, so what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we were trying to find voltage, and we have the initial voltage. Um, so we can start with um, the voltage equation for the inductor. So V of T is L V I V T. That gives us uh, 20 millihenries times V of T of A1 e to the negative 10,000 T plus A2 e to the negative 40,000 T. So that's going to give me 0 0.02 negative 10,000 A1 e to the negative 10,000 plus or minus 40,000 e to the 40,000 T. When you distribute that through, you should come up with negative 200 A1 e to the negative 10,000 T minus 800 e to the negative 40,000 T. Okay, so this is important. Now we don't know A1 and A oops, we need an A2 here, we need an A2 here. We don't know what A1 and A2 is, so we have to pull on our initial conditions in order to find that. We know that at time zero we have 28 volts. So 28 volts is equal to negative 200 A1. E to the zero power is 1 minus 800. Again, A2, E to the zero power is, is uh, 1. So that is one equation. I need to somewhere find another equation in order to completely solve for um, my voltage, my voltage function. So this is one equation I have. I have negative 200. A1 minus 800, A2 equal to 28. For my second equation that I need in order to solve, you know what, I need to park up here because this was actually negative 200, A1 equal to 10,000, T minus 800, a2 e to the negative 40,000 T, and we're looking for A1 and A2 so that we can. So now for the second set of equations, we're going to pull on the initial conditions of the current. So we know at time zero, we have 40 milliamps. So we take the general equation, which is I is equal to A1 e to the negative 10,000 T plus A2 e to the negative 40,000 T. At time zero, we have 40 milliamps. E to the zero power is one. E to the zero power is one. So these give me the two equations that I need. Once you put that into your calculator, 
you should arrive at the values that a1 is equal to 0 0.1 and a2 is equal to negative 0 0.06. So now I can put that in here, 0 0.1, and I know a2 is times negative 0 0.06. So when I figure that out, we're going to end up with a general equation for the voltage. Um, so the answer for part A is negative 20 e to the negative 10,000 t plus 48 e to the negative 40,000 t volts. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. For part B, you want to find when time when power is equal to zero. Now, power is equal to zero. Um, well, let's do it this way. Let's find the power function. So we know that power is equal to V time. And we just solved for V. Um, we know that V, so we have V is equal to negative 20. 20 e to the negative 10,000 t plus 48 e to the negative 40,000 t. Similarly, we can solve for i. So i, we have a1, which um, was 0.1. So i is going to be 0 0.1 e to the negative 10,000 t minus 0 0.06 e to the negative 40,000 t. Therefore, p then is equal to v, negative 20 e to the negative 10,000 t, plus 48 e to the negative 40,000 t, times 0 0.1 e to the negative 10,000 t, minus 0 0.06 e to the negative 40,000 t. Now we foil it, and we have, once you foil it, you're going to end up with a negative 2e to the negative 20,000 t plus 4.8 e to the negative 50,000 t plus 1.2 e to the negative 50,000 t minus 2.88 e to the negative 50,000 t. These two can combine. So we have a 2, negative 2 e to the negative 20,000 t plus 6 e to the negative 50,000 t minus 2.88 e to the negative 80,000 t. And that is our power function. Now we want to ask, when is that zero? Oops. So, when is that zero? To solve that, we set the power function to equal to zero. So I'm going to set p is equal to zero. I'm going to go negative 2e to the negative 20,000 t plus 6e to the negative 50,000 t minus 2.88e to the negative 80,000 t. Set the power function to zero. Now we can simplify a little bit, or we can simplify before we work through it, by dividing through this whole thing through by e to the negative 20,000 t. When we do that, we're left with negative 2 plus 6e to the negative 30,000 t. And that's going to be minus 2.88 e to the negative 50,000 t is equal to zero. 
And to solve that, we need to use this substitution rule. Let x equal e to the negative 50,000. Oops. Let 80 minus 20 is 60. So let, uh, let x equal e to the negative 30,000 t. We can rewrite that as a quadratic equation that looks like 2 negative 2.88 x squared plus 6x minus 2 is equal to 0. Um, I'm going to assume you know the quadratic formula because that's algebra and uh, you definitely need to know algebra at this point. So when you solve, use a quadratic equation, you're going to end up with two values for x of 0 0.417 and x also equals 1.67. Okay, so now we can go back to the x. So go back to x right here. We said x is equal to e to the negative 30,000 t, so let's evaluate the first value. So we have e to the negative 30,000 t is equal to 0 0.417. Bring the t down by taking the natural log of both sides. So this is negative 30,000 t is equal to log 0.417 divided by negative 30,000. That will give us a time of 29.2 microseconds. So, one possibility for T is 29.2 microseconds. Now, the other value that X could have been was 1.67. So, we said, so we have E to the negative 30,000 t is equal to 1.67. Bring the, take the natural log of both sides, will give us negative 30,000 t is equal to log 1.67. Divide both through by negative 30,000. And you'll end up with t is equal to negative 17 microseconds. And since you can't have negative time, that's not a valid conclusion. So the answer to part B is uh, T is equal to 29.2 microseconds.